G'day guys, welcome back to Cakes by Chopper. Today we have Stimpy from Ren and Stimpy. I hope you guys like it. Stick around to see how to make it. To start off your Stimpy cake, what you're gonna do is head over to the Cakes by Chopper Facebook page, print off this guide. Now, there's no specific template because you're gonna follow my loose instructions on how to form him. And I've just printed off this uh, reference picture that's about the right size that you're gonna use. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start off by stacking our cakes. Because there's gonna be a lot of chocolate on this cake as well, I'm not actually filling it too much. Because these are only little small six inch cakes, I don't need to put a support in because it's not gonna to be too much weight on him. They're actually quite a nice firm cake, so it's gonna be fine. Okay, so we've measured that he's the same height as the template. Now what you're gonna do is take your template and cut the general shape of Stimpy out. Just ignoring all the details at the side. So I've cut out the general shape of it and it's gonna be a bit bigger, but we just wanted to see what shape we're all going for. And I'm liking it to an upside down jelly bean. I actually might move that to the back a little bit more than I have. So that's a lot easier to remember. So what I'm gonna do now is carve down the front of Stimpy. Now with the back of him, if I turn this around and show you, it's gonna go in, it's gonna be only a little bit off the back here, and then it'll go in a bit at the bottom. Now, cause I'm gonna give him a little butt crack, I'm gonna take a piece out of the back. You might think that's a little too big for a butt crack, but just remember it's gonna have fondant over the top, there's going to be ganache, and it's easy to remember which is the front and the back because you've placed his bottom towards the back of the cake board. Okay, now we're smoothing out the edges. Take off any rough corners that you see. So just little bits at a time until you're happy with the shape. Now while our ganache is still quite soft, I'm going to apply a little bit to the top and build up his brow. Okay, a little bit of ganache to glue that down. Okay, so once you're happy with the shape and you've put on his little brow piece, now we're going to cover him while the ganache is still soft. And this is the part where if you've got any shape that you're just not quite sure of, you can build it up with a little bit of ganache. You don't want to go too overboard with it, but I mean, you've got a little bit of room to play. Because this is a stacked cake, I'm using a more firm ganache and it's cold here now in Sydney. So I had to just microwave the ganache for a couple of seconds. And the reason I've used a 70-30 ganache mix is because I do want the chocolate to sort of hold this a little bit. So I'm gonna use the ganache to round that out and build it up a little bit and give him a booty. <laughs> I literally never thought I'd be making Stimpy's butt out of chocolate. Another one of my favorite tips with this ganache is to get a very, very hot water. Be careful and not burn yourself, but dip your offset spatula in it and then you're gonna run over it the heat will smooth it out a bit better. So you can work with it after it's been put on and set a little bit. And it just gives you a really nice finish. Now that your cake's had a little bit of time to chill, I've prepared some fondant in Stimpy's color. We're gonna roll that out. Use some cornstarch or corn flour all over your bench. As you can see, I've applied it quite liberally because I don't want this to stick. Make sure you keep your fondant moving. I think that's a given by now. If you're using fondant, you know not to like just roll it and then leave it. You've got to keep it moving. Now I'm going to be brave and try and cover Stimpy in one piece, but I'm going to use it quite thin fondant, so it's going to be a bit tricky. Definitely choosing the way it goes on is important. If you're going to try and do the same thing, I would suggest go front to back because it's easier to hide things on the side. Make sure it's at the bottom. Now that's not gonna reach the, all the way over the back. So luckily, I've got room to move because the ganache is chilled. It looks like it's gonna go all the way around. Start from the top down. You can see these pleats at the side here. A good way to get them out is rub down the center 
you're sort of telling it where to go, not just accepting where it's choosing to go. But you can see here, like it's trying to form its own little crevice. Just stretch it apart and then you push it down and it gets rid of that. And just show the, show the fondant who's boss. Now you're gonna get a knife, cut a couple of centimeters out from the edge because this is gonna curl in under. Ball your excess up straight away. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know one of my favorite tips is to ball up some fondant, make sure it's clean and not got any moisture on it. And then you rub it in a fair bit of corn flour. And then you go over your fondant once it's on the cake and you buff it out. And it sort of gives this nice smooth layer to it. Like it takes out that rough bumpy look. Let's get buff out his butt. I'm a bit obsessed by Stimpy's butt, by the way. So using a color reference off my phone, I've got the color for his tummy, which I've done here. And I'm gonna roll that into a ball and then squeeze it at the bottom a little bit. So you're making the shape of his cheeks and tummy. Let's see, what I'm gonna do here is push that, bring it out. I'm gonna paste a little bit of edible glue on here. And lifting it up, I'll carefully place that on. Smooth down the edges. And then I'll go around and seal them in with the edible glue. And I'm just gonna reshape this bottom area. It's gone a little bit too far, so I'm just gonna cut into that. Then using a dry brush, we're gonna go around the edge. And smooth them all off. Now with this other piece, it's really hard for me to measure out this and give you quantities. You just have to wait until you've got your cake done, sort of. Okay, so what we're gonna do is roll out the fondant into an oval. Now we know where Stimpy's nose goes. So we're gonna see at the sides, perfect. Now we know that has to be shaped down at the back here, which is gonna go in like that. So we can take that away. And we know it's gotta have a bit of a dip like this. So push your finger in, then push down. So you're making those side pieces. Now if we come in here and cut, then cut, so it's a little triangle out. Smooth it around. You're creating that little dimple of his mouth. Now we've got to create his big silly grin. I'm just gonna use the back of a brush to pull that up. The good thing about Ren and Stimpy is their, the cartoon itself, their shape changes quite a lot. So we have a little bit of playroom with how much of it we can actually shape. All right, I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna try it on here and see. Yeah, that looks, that looks good to me. What I'm gonna do now is use some of this light lemon yellow fondant. I'm going to roll that out to make the back part behind his eyes. In the cartoon it changes quite a bit, but I'm just gonna go with the reference photo I'm using off Google, which is the light lemony yellow. I'm just gonna do this by hand, but I'm just cutting out a very loose figure eight, and I'm gonna place that on the middle there like that. And as I said, I'm going, I knew I would be manipulating it on here, because I want it to match where I put his eyebrows and stuff. For Stimpy's nose, you're gonna take some blue fondant, smooth it out, and then ball it up. You can use some skewers if you wanna support it. If you do a taller nose, like in the picture, I would use the skewers. I'm gonna use it a little bit flatter and rounder because I want it to sit with his face. I don't want it to be too high off it. Smoothing it down. And you'll see I can place that in. I've just got to make sure there's no little creases. I'm going to use a straw to push in, 
two nose holes. And then take the back of a brush and just push them in. Once you've got his nose on and you are happy with it, you're gonna get some white fondant. Take two round balls. Well, actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one ball and then I'm gonna cut it in half. Placing that on. And if you're happy with the eyes then, take a little bit of edible paint. Let's see what color we can roll out of this. Because we need some hands. Okay, for Stimpy's arm, I'm gonna roll it a bit thick. I'm going to cut that down the middle. So we've got two about the right size. Tuck that under to give him a little bit of a shoulder. Your edible glue, give that a swipe. Okay, now just push that on. And then with my brush, just neatening that up. I think that's actually another really good tip to make your cakes look a little bit more professional. Just use the soft brush to smooth any bits that you're not happy with. Okay, now with that flesh color that we made for the hands, I'm gonna break a bit off. Roll what would be a cuff. So you're gonna need two of those about the same size. Then you roll a clam shape. So I'm just gonna roll an oval. Cut the oval in half. Then we're going to give him three fingers. One, two. And just pull them together. Okay, I'm gonna put his hand like that. And then hide that with the cuff. I didn't mention this before, I said the cheat part but you're gonna push his fingers in like that and use the arm part to cover and make it look like his hands fuller. So you're not applying more and more fondant on. Okay, for Stimpy's ears, what we're going to do is make two little shapes like a lemon. Now once you've made your little cone with the pink on the bottom and you've sliced it down on an angle, you're going to place it on like that and then use your tool to round out the edge and smooth it down so it looks like it's meant to be there and not just stuck on. Okay, now we roll out our red. Take a little bit off to make some legs and make it look like a join. As you can see a little bit of pleating around here which I wasn't too worried about because he is sitting down after all. Use your spatula and then just gently blend it together. You'll eventually get a thin edge. You had a better join than you did to start with. I'm gonna go roughly the same spot. Smooth it out as much as you can. Get your edible glue. Wow, I'm actually really happy with that. I've never used the edible glue before tonight. Now I'm just balling up the fondant into like a jelly bean shape but I'm sort of tucking it over and trying to manipulate it all down to the bottom so it's nice and smooth all over. You'll see what I mean here. I want all these little lines squished into the bottom where it's gonna join. Because these feet are quite top heavy, but they're going to sit like that. And it's got a bit of a curvature in them, which I'm just going to use a brush, and then that's going to sit there. Now, before you call it a day, go around and check that everything is to your liking. This hand was a little bit hidden, so I changed the design and put it on top. Because I didn't want to replace the whole hand, I just stuffed it with a little bit of red fondant underneath, which I got a little bit of red stuff here. I'm not going to replace it just over a little bit of color. If you want to do that hand last when you do your cake, then that's fine. I kind of want him to have a tongue. Stimpy's always got his tongue out, so it's going to make some pink fondant. Flatten it out into a little bit of a tongue shape. I'm actually gonna make it a little bit smaller. So I've just cut it there, put a little bit of edible glue, tuck it into the corner, up under his lip. Might need to hold it there in place for a moment. Then using one of your tools, I'm gonna put a little tongue crease in. Okay, I'll get a little bit of steam in action on him. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll be back with more content and I promise you 
There'll be lots more coming your way very soon. Bye guys.